We've got one of the best climbers in the world, our very own cycling stig, twig, Andrew Feather. And we're gonna see if he can ride up the most famous, most prestigious climb in cycling, Alp d'Huez, faster than any other human. We're gonna see if he can do it virtually using the latest and most high-tech indoor training gear. Alp d'Huez, not the longest or hardest climb, but as the centerpiece of so many editions of the Tour de France, it's 21 hairpins and historical significance make it the most prestigious and famous in cycling. It's 12 kilometers long with an average gradient of 8.6%. And the current KOM is Roman Bardet at 36 minutes, 21 seconds. That is absolutely rapid. And it means he averaged 20 kilometers an hour uphill. Therefore, being the fastest ever human to ride up Alpe d'Huez is something extremely prestigious and definitely worth bragging about. So we wanna see if our hill climbing champion of the people, one of the most talented natural born climbers on the planet, dad and solicitor, Andrew Feather, can do it faster than Roman Bardet. And we want to see if he can do it virtually with the help of Wahoo RGT. And well, I've been doing some maths and on paper, if he has a good day and he can put out the numbers that he sort of theoretically can do, well, it's possible. So I'm excited. Let's go see what he can do. Inside GCN Megabase, I've set up Wahoo X for Feather. We've got his bike on a Wahoo kicker to accurately measure his power output and translate it to the virtual world using Wahoo RGT's Magic Roads function, which we've used to create a virtual model of Alp d'Huez. We're at the base of the climb now. Feather, how are you feeling? A bit nervous. No, I'm not, not used to indoor training, so uh, yeah. Give my best shot. Well, we'll see. It's a good virtual dress rehearsal for the real thing. Have you got a pacing strategy in mind? I think just follow that person on the right, isn't it? Yeah, so we've actually set up a bot. This is something you can do in the app. This bot is set at Alpe d'Huez record pace, so quicker than Roman Bardet. I think it comes out at about 36 minutes, 10 seconds. It's set at six watts per kilo. So as long as you can match that and sit on the bot, then you'll be, you'll be okay. Okay, yeah, okay. Yep. All right, five, four, three, Two, one, you're off. Oh. It's a, it's, a, it's a strong start. I'm gonna get the fans on for you, keep you cool. Cooling is gonna be key. Feather set off at a ferocious pace. I mean, the pace that he's doing, he's, he's going over just over six watts per kilo. He's matching the bot. Most people couldn't sustain this kind of pace for a minute, but he's trying to do it for over 30 minutes. I mean, this is absolutely insane. So an important detail is that uh, Feather's using the latest Wahoo Kicker V6. And the key upgrade with this is it now has Wi-Fi connectivity in addition to the Bluetooth and AMP Plus. Why is that important? Well, it's a more reliable connection. It means it can update firmware automatically, but more importantly than that, if you're doing something like this where it's a max effort and you're giving everything, or if you're just doing an e-race and you don't want your uh, connection to drop out, which can happen with Bluetooth connections, the Wi-Fi is just much more robust, much more reliable. For example, if Alex went next door and started warming his lunch in the microwave. Something like microwave signals or the washing machine being on can interfere with Bluetooth, not with the Wi-Fi. An interesting detail is Feather's climbing style. So he, he likes to ride out the saddle a lot and this is because he finds that that's how he gets most of his power out. And you know, it's a bit like Alberto Contador, but I've done some maths and I've worked out that on a climb like Alpe d'Huez, depending on how unaerodynamic you are out the saddle, because some people are more upright than others, it could cost you around two minutes versus being seated because 
At this speed, aerodynamics still matters, even though you're going uphill. Now, in virtual reality, it doesn't take that into consideration yet. Something that the Wahoo indoor setup can do really well, though, is respond to changes in gradient. So although uh, the ALP averages around 8%, it's quite deceptive because it changes in gradient quite a bit. It has ramps at 14, which are quite killer. And something you get is a sort of levelling off on the hairpins. And then the hairpins, when you ride them in real life, they kind of like spit you out and you get a bit of an acceleration. And what's really cool is, when you ride virtually like this, it's able to give you that same sensation because of the flywheel holding your inertia that then sort of releases it out of the hairpin. But it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's good, realistic training. You see here, he's just coming up to halfway point on the climb and he's on record pace at the moment, so 18 minutes at the halfway point. So it's on record pace. How are you feeling? Yeah, no, I'm feeling okay. It's uh, just uh, sitting in his slipstream. Seems like I'm saving 10 watts by doing so at the moment, which is good. Can you believe this guy? It's 19 minutes in at six watts per kilo. He's just talking like he's doing zone two. <laughs> No, it's hanged. I hate you. I hate you. <laughs> We're heading into the last two kilometers to go. Feather is still keeping pace with the pace bot, still doing around six watts per kilo the whole way up. I, it, it, it blows my mind. He's, we're coming up to 30 minutes. Um, can he do the last 2K in six minutes? That is amazing. This is so tight. It's so tight. He's there or thereabouts. I just can't believe the power that you're actually managing to hold here. It's so impressive. Feather is attacking the bot now. He's trying to put some distance in. He's paced it to perfection. He's trying to do a negative split, so now he's putting in a surge to get a gap on the bot. And already, you can see, the pace bot is 10, 12 metres back on Feather. So he's opening up a gap. He's trying to push on to the finish. He's got 1.7 kilometres to go. What you're witnessing here is an exhibition in just pure aerobic talent and climbing prowess. 500 watts, I just saw him then. Oh, I don't know how he does it. One more hairpin to go. That is hairpin number 20, just gone round. We've got 1.1 Ks left. Oh, that's it, he's going under the red kite. 900 meters to go. One more hairpin, and he's got, oh, three, three minutes. He's got three minutes to do this final kilometer. Last 500 metres to go. Oh, come on. How quick can you go? How quick can you get under the record? This is it now. This is where you get everything out. This is where you absolutely smash it. We get everything, just empty the tank. Last 170 metres. <laughs> oh, mate. That is amazing. Oh, oh you're absolutely dripping. <laughs> That's an awesome ride. That is incredible. Look at that. 35 minutes dead. 35 minutes dead. Oh. Oh, oh. Well, I can see here, average power, 390 watts. Oh, that's hard. 
<laughs> yeah, I think it, from my perspective, it helps a lot with the uh, with the kicker climb because I've got a kicker at home and I'm always flat, but I like riding out the saddle. So just to replicate my climbing position made it much easier and yeah. made me probably do more power kind of thing. So you're just orientating your muscles in the way yeah, that you like to exactly. climb. Yeah, that's exactly. in, that is interesting. I mean, that, that was absolutely incredible. It's, it's amazing watching someone do something like that, like, like what Andrew can do. It, it's just a phenomenal climbing performance. If you enjoyed this video, and if, and if you appreciate Andrew's effort, thumbs up and subscribe. Right, I think we need to go and get you some, um, some salad or whatever yeah. it is you eat. Sounds good. Cool.